This is Eric Mwada with Mwada.com for the week of May the 4th, 2012. Uh, we see that uh, Friday we had the market go down about 2.82% as far as the Nasdaq is concerned. Any hope that the calendar turning from May to June would change the market's trend were trashed uh, last Friday as stocks started the month with a resounding third. Uh, we see that now we see the Nasdaq has pushed back to the area we thought could be short-term target which is the area around the 200 day moving average so we'll see how markets are gonna respond also this big down day uh, was because that we saw the market push below uh, 30.90 on the daily RSI so that's technically why we had a big drop every time you have a drop below that or even a move back above this level um, that's going to be lead to a big move, a move below 30.90, big down day, a move back above 30.90. You're going to see a technical bounce on a big, um, big number printed on the boards. As far as the markets are concerned, it's very hard to tell whether this is going to be the low, but we'll keep an eye here. It's going to take a couple of days to resolve to see whether we get a bounce off this 200 day moving average or if we settle down here and then eventually continue moving lower. So it's really a uh, short-term price target seem to have been reached being around the 200 day moving average. Take a look at the Dow, take you back to uh, beginning of May when we had the market surging to a four-year closing high right there. That seemed like a trap and we, we talked about the fact that at the time the technicals were showing a negative divergence with the markets not confirming technically this price surge so you know not a surprise and since then we've ha seen the market lose about um, you know almost I was at thousand points since the high somewhere around there so really back below the 200 day moving average short term we'll wait to see how this market is gonna defend this area or if it's gonna not defend it either way uh, short term markets could bounce uh, but from a month to month, week to week, the market still remains uh, slightly on the negative side. If you take a look at the Dow 30 minute chart, you'll see that on Monday at the highs of the day, uh, the market was trading at about 12,600. And it's because it hit this level here, which is the highs on the RSI top lines. So once that level was reached, you see that right there. Let me show that clearly. Once we hit that level right there at the resistance line on this RSI top lines on the 30 minute chart, that was always going to be a, a sell signal and we, we flagged that. And since then we've had a you know tremendous 500 point um, drop. Really not a surprise. Uh, if we take a look at the Dow and really what thing we need to look at here is going into the new month is the RSI level there. If we breach the 50 level on the monthly basis we, m we might see a big drop in the, uh, in the market now the last time that happened was last year about June July August time frame and that led to this once we breached 50 here that led to this big drop in the middle of last year so we might find the market repeating the same scenario uh, from uh, about 12 months ago now the Dow transports on a weekly basis had a big week last week uh, 4.4 percent but that brought the transports back to this declining 10-week moving average so it's not a surprise that we see it giving back most of the gains the reason being that we thought that was a, a false rally um, and we also see that there's a possibility of uh, the Dow transports now breaching and moving below zero on the weekly MACD time frame so that break there is going to lead to another uh, further move lower. Remember the last time we broke below zero was uh, July, August of last year and we had a big drop like as you can see this is um, this time frame here is when the MACDs moved below zero last year so we are just about to move below zero again uh, this time around and that could also lead to a an accelerated move to the downside. Let, so let's keep an eye on how the MACD on the Dow transports are going to be shaping out. Um, if you take a look at the Dow transports from a daily chart, you'll see that last week's rally was really fake because it just brought the market back to this yellow shaded area around here, 
which has been an area of either support or resistance you know going back to this um, support here a break point there and then it was a resistance 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 and then a, we had a breakout level there and then we had support again support and this has turned into an area of resistance to the upside so not a surprise again if you take a look at it from the RSI which seems to give us a lot of information the RSI show, was showing that last week's rally came and hit that RSI top line right there which is the blue line so that was a you know an obvious resistance area and once we hit that and started turning around it's no surprise we've seen the market really um, give back a lot of previous gains as far as the Dow transports are concerned so net net it's a negative looking chart but also if we take a look at the monthly chart this being a monthly chart going back to 1981 you'll see that the RS the MACD's MACD especially the main MACD the 12 26 and the 9 setting right there the MACD is showing us now this here is the 2009 2008 time frame once we broke through that level we had a crash now we are about to break above below that level again so you know I'm starting to open my you know my thinking to the possibility that this market could be looking to have a tremendous move lower if we break that level um, just like we did in 2008 2009 we had a huge drop we might have a massive 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 down to down draft in the market in the coming weeks and months let's take a look at one of the best performing sectors in the market which was the real estate area real estate was doing very well you know most of 2012 most of the stocks in that sector were breaking out but what we had pointed out is we had resistance showing up as far as the RSI was concerned and so even though the market was breaking out here beginning of the year this was always going to be a resistance point and it has turned into a solid resistance point right there and all that tells us is we need to stay out of the out of this market and I think you know the fact that even the leadership sectors in the market are stalling suggests that we are going to be under some some pullback serious pullback in the for the rest of uh, the year um, this doesn't look good unless and only unless this market can engineer a breakout above this declining RSI top lines on the monthly let's take a look at FAZ three times financial bear ETF and what we see here is that it closed above 50 on the weekly chart right there that close above 50 was good for about an 11 percent gain now the reason why I bring that up is should we see in the new week um, a pullback below 50 on the weekly RSI that's going to suggest a huge uh, sell-off on this ETF and a big rally in the financials so let's keep an eye on this RSI uh, level on the weekly because a pullback below 50 whenever that happens maybe in the new week um, is going to suggest a, a snapback rally in the market and a pullback in this ETF uh, it's going to be a big uh, probably a double percentage uh, pullback so let's watch out for that RSI level if you take a look at the dollar the dollar has been showing um, almost a two weeks of a breakout follow-through which is really good so we need we need the dollar to stay above 81.52 which is the highest close going back to beginning of 2012 so let's keep an eye on that level um, a move back below 81.52 is gonna suggest a market that is, is in trouble so if you see the market as far as the dollar is concerned move below this level you might wanna go long the general market now if you take a look at gold we talked about the fact that gold had been trying to hold support level on this 15,556 level so as long as it's holding that level and it held you know we were, we were speculating that um, gold should, could still be in play and it is in play because it's held this level very well defended this level three times now um, October of last year held that level December of uh, 20 11 it held and now for the last three weeks we've defended that area so the next thing I think gold should try to recapture and move higher and in the in the future should we see a break below that level then we might short gold but for now since it's holding very well we need to stay long the gold trade 
if you take a look at the opposite trade two times inverse the gold um, the ETF the DZZ we had talked about the fact that unless it breaks out above this level here unless it was gonna break out and trade south or I should say not north of this area here if it broke out then maybe we would have seen the gold trade break down but as long as this instrument is struggling to you know this has been a resistance area here as long as it can't move above that area then we can speculate that gold is going to continue being in play this one not in favor right now as it's showing resistance obvious resistance uh, around the 540 area which means gold should continue being in play take a look at crude oil you see that we are breaking now serious break going back to the lows of 2009 uh, that trend break is in is in play right now so this is uh, I mean again we we we'd be to, we had been talking about the fact that the 10 week moving average and the 13 week moving and the 33 week moving average crossed over I was a bearish setup and we see recently we had a crossover between the 10 week moving average and the 33 week moving average again that's not good for the next couple of weeks and months so it's not no surprise that crude oil has moved from 110 all the way now to 83 if you remember uh, many months back we talked about the fact that crude oil was finding it difficult to move about this resistance line here so those resistance multiple levels here and there and that to me at the time meant that this was going to be a struggling instrument and we've seen it move from 110 again all the way to the lower 80s so not a surprise we could get a snapback rally just because we've had a huge almost a one two three four almost a five week downdraft so a pullback a snapback rally at any point should be expected uh, last but not least let's take a look at the VIX remember we talked about the fact that if the VIX stays above 2510 then it's going to be on breakout mode which is going to be consistent with it moving trying to move above the 200 and moving average so as long as the VIX stays above this level here um, we should stay short but if the VIX moves back below 2510 then we might look for ideas to go along so either way 2510 is the line on the sand 20, above 2510 on the VIX stay short uh, below 2510 on the VIX you want to get out of this um, short trade Eric Moad with Moad.com. Good luck. Uh, day to day, the market could rally, but month to month, it's not looking good. Eric Moad, good luck, peace, and blessings.